Look at all that brush. There's got to be some bass in there. Morning, y'all. Here at Lake Hamilton today. And uh, this lake and I have a little bit of a history this time of year. So about seven or eight years ago, I used to do really well in tournaments out on this lake. And it would take anywhere from 12 to 13 pounds to win out here. But then all of a sudden when the Alabama raid came out, it started taking 18 to 20 pounds to win tournaments out here. And I just never could figure out how to do it. So my goal for the day is to figure out how to catch that four and five pound caliber bass that I need to win a tournament out here. So let's get after it. So every time I fished out here in the past, I would focus in the 10 to 15 foot range and I'll catch a lot of two to two and a half pounders in that depth range, but I never get that bigger quality bite. So I'm gonna try a little bit deeper today and see if there aren't bigger fish holding in 20 to 25. But before I do that, I wanna see if there's a morning bite going on with all this cloud cover. Got him. First fish of the day right there. That took like two minutes. This is what I'm talking about, guys. I can go down the bank, throw on the crankbait and a little finesse jig and catch fish like this and maybe a little bit bigger pretty much all day. But, uh, you know, that's not gonna win tournaments out here when it's taking 18 pounds. But I just got that bass in a little flat side KVD crankbait, a little pound and a halfer. Not too bad, just off a little main lake point here on some rocks. But uh, looking for a little bit bigger ones today than this. Okay, so now that I'm done checking out that morning bite, I'm gonna start graphing offshore to try to find some bigger bass. And before I came out here, I marked about 25 or 30 main lake points and humps on my graph, just to make sure I graph all the spots I wanna hit throughout the day. Got him. That's a good one. Oh. <laughs> Not a good one, but uh, not a bad one. First fish offshore. I uh, just been graphing around for about an hour, guys, and uh, finally pulled up on this a little rocky spot offshore. And it's about 25 feet of water. I really thought I was gonna <laughs> hook a big one out here, but uh, just another little guy. So I'm gonna keep looking. Man, I thought that was gonna be a toad when I set the hook on him. I'm fishing out here uh, off the end of a big ridge that runs into this lake and there's just a rocky spot out in the middle of this uh, ridge and I just kind of toss a three quarter inch football head jig down there and was dragging it really slow and that fish picked it up. Got him. This is a better one. Same spot. Yeah, this is a little bit better one. Well, no, never mind. It's a nice spot though, look at that thing. That is a chunky spot. That same little rock patch I was fishing and uh, just throwing that three quarter ounce football head jig down there and there's definitely a bunch of fish on this little hard spot but they're still not the size I'm looking for. Man, I'm just throwing that jig out there letting it sink down all the way into those rocks and I'm barely crawling it. These fish are not wanting the bait moving at all. And that's pretty typical in the winter. And in my last video, I talked about how you should move around a lot and fish fast in the winter. And what I meant by that was hitting a lot of different spots, but not necessarily moving your bait fast. When you get to an area, I'll normally spend about a minute to two minutes on each cast and really soak my baits in the water, but I don't stay on any spot for a very long time. Uh, this spot I pulled up, made three casts and caught that first fish. And if I hadn't caught a fish in two more casts, I would been gone. Got him. And there are a ton of little bass on this spot. This would be a good limit spot in the tournament. These are all spots and uh, they seem to be 12 inches out here. So beautiful fish again. There's a lot of them down there. I've, I've been bit on almost every single cast on this spot. I want to keep moving and try to find some bigger fish, but it's pretty fun when you're catching them literally every cast. 
So here's an image of the spot using the side scan on my hummingbird. And as you can see on the left side here, there's a nice rock pile. And you can see some white dots on top of that rock pile. And those are those spotted bass I'm catching. And then here's the same spot using the 2D sonar. And it's actually kind of interesting. When I graphed over this, I couldn't see any bass on the graph. A lot of times when these fish get in these rock piles, they'll get really tight in those rocks and you won't actually see them off the bottom. So the only way you can actually find those fish is using the side scan. Man, well, this is fun. I need to find some bigger bass. It's got the Alabama ring on my Alabama ring. Just one of those kind of days, you know? Got one. This is a good one. So not a bad one. There we go. Nice little large mouth. So uh, <laughs> finally gave up on that uh, deep stuff. I just couldn't uh, figure them out. I don't know why. I think that that's where a lot of the bigger fish are being caught. Those you know four and five pounders, but. I just couldn't get it going. So in the last like hour and a half here, I thought I might as well come at least catch a few fish. They're not gonna be very big, but uh, it's always fun when you can catch them cranking and throwing a jig. So I'm probably just gonna throw a couple fish in like a montage or something for y'all. And then if I end up catching a good one, then I guess I'll show you that. But otherwise, uh, just enjoy watching me catch a bunch of these little guys. <laughs> down this bank. There we go. Not a bad one. So if you guys just want to go out and catch a bunch of bass like this on Lake Hamilton or any other clear lake in like November and December, just find these transition banks. You can see there's kind of this uh, chunkier kind of flat rock and it transitions into some little boulders and then it goes into some pebbles. Find these little transition areas and if there's a dock by it, that's even better. And just throw a jig in that little crankbait and you're gonna catch a ton of fish. And here's a graphic of what I'm talking about. What will happen is these fish will set up in the backs of the pockets chasing shad in the fall, in like October and November. And then in late November, they'll start transitioning to the first rock transition between the pebbles and the bigger boulders. Then in early December, they'll move to the second rock transition between the boulders and the slate rock. And finally, they'll move to the bluff walls in the winter. Got him. Good one. Really good one. This is a toad. Well, it's not a toad. It's a toad relative to what I've been catching today. Don't jump off fish. There we go. It's a skinny little guy. That's not a giant, but that's a two and a half pounder at least. Better than what I have been catching. It's also blind in one eye. So, uh, figures that's the one I catch. Again, another rock transition it actually goes from uh, this chunk rock over here that's in about 10 to 12 feet of water and then it transitions down this bank into this more slate kind of steep rock that's in 18 to 20 and that fish was sitting right on that break just like the last couple fish we've been catching. Awesome, I'll let this guy go. Again, not a giant, but nice bass. <laughs> and now I stopped fishing offshore at 2 o'clock and it's 245 right now so I've caught six keeper bass in 45 minutes and now they probably would have gone for around maybe eight and a half nine pounds so uh, as you can tell the fishing isn't terrible out I mean catching fish as long as I'm working these little rock transitions but as far as the bigger fish go I just can't figure out the pattern I don't know what the deal is 
Again, like I said earlier, it's taking 24 pounds to win last weekend, and it took 17 pounds to catch a check. So a lot of people are catching big fish out here. And so I don't know, again, it could be the weather with the cloud cover and everything. These fish just might be a little bit uh, screwed up. They might be suspended over the brush tops. Um, but either way, I should be able to figure out how to catch something if they're catching 17 to 18 pounds just to catch a check. Okay, so before I end this video, I want to show you guys some of the spots I graphed over today. And a lot of them had a lot of fish and bait on them, but I just couldn't get the fish to react for some reason. And so maybe you guys have some suggestions on baits and presentations I can try to get these fish to bite. And if you do, just leave a comment down below. Okay, so here's one of the first spots I graphed over. And as you can see, there's a bunch of bait suspended off the drop. And then there's some uh, big arches right on the drop. And I don't know if these are bass. They could be white bass, stripe, or something like that. But it looked pretty good, and I fished it with an Alabama rig. And the jig and didn't get any bites. So here's another spot I found and it's just a hump with some stumps and rocks in about 20 to 22 feet of water and there's some fish suspended over the top of that brush and they're actually spread out in a line across the bottom and that makes me think that they're bass uh, but I tried to throw an Alabama rig and a jig down there and just couldn't get them to bite and in the summertime if I saw a spot like this this would be a guaranteed fish on like a 6 or an 8XD but for some reason they just wouldn't bite today. Now here's just a nice shot of some cane piles I found, and I don't know, there's not really any fish in them, but I thought it was a cool shot. So I got pretty pumped up about this spot when I first grabbed over it, and you can see there's a bunch of fish suspended off the drop, and then there's some bait down there, some big brush piles, and just fish all over them. And I'm sure that some of these fish are crappie and maybe white bass, but there are even fish like busting on the surface, so I think that there's some good bass that are sitting somewhere around these tops, but again, I fished it for about 30 minutes with an Alabama rig and a football jig, and just didn't get any bites. Now one thing I did see a lot of today was fish suspended off the drop in about 20 to 25 feet of water, sitting over 50 feet. And normally you can catch these fish on an Alabama rig, just count that bait down and reel it through the school, but they just weren't biting the rig today. And I don't know if the Alabama rig has lost some of its effectiveness over the years after everyone's throwing it. Um, one thing I didn't try today was a single swim bait or like an underspin, so that's something I might want to try next time I go out there. Maybe I could have got these fish to bite if I had tried that. Well guys, I'm going to call it a day. I uh, didn't manage to catch any big ones today like I was hoping, but uh, you know, that's how fishing goes. But if any of y'all are sticks out here on Lake Hamilton, uh, either leave a comment below or send me a DM on Instagram and tell me what I need to be doing out here. I'd love to come back out and film another video and actually get on some big fish and show you how to do it. But uh, either way, I caught a bunch of little fish today, so it was pretty fun. And I hope you learned something about fishing those rock transitions. So I hope you enjoyed this video, and if you did, hit like and subscribe down below. And also leave a comment if you have any other questions about what I was doing. And I'm also thinking about starting up a live stream uh, that's going to be going up on YouTube once a week, where I'm going to be showing off how I look at Navionics uh, lake maps and also at Google Earth to help find spots around the lake. So just be looking out for that and I'm going to be asking you guys for input on lakes and I'm actually going to be using your lakes in the video so that I can kind of be like your personal internet guide picking out good spots on your lake to match the seasonal patterns. So be watching out for that and other than that, hope you enjoyed the video and we'll see you next time.